Welcome back to another Spirit Island video. In this video, we're going to be doing a tutorial of the Spirit Island um, the TTS mod. So what this program is that I'm using, this is Tabletop Simulator. This is a program that you can purchase off of uh, the Steam Workshop. It costs around $19. Um, so from there, once you have that, um, once you've purchased TTS, um, there's different mods that you can kind of subscribe to. And once you subscribe to those mods, you can have access to the um, the different games. So if you want to play um, Warhammer or, uh, in this case, Spirit Island, you'd subscribe to the Spirit Island mod, and then you'd get access to properly loaded in. So this is what happens when you load in the uh, Tabletop Simulator mod. On the left, you have Join, and on the right, you have a Create. You press Join here, and you can join any uh, games. Um, so what you would do is you would just type in the game you'd like to play. In this case, I'd, I'm going to type in Spirit Island. And then it's going to load up the um, the games of uh, the different Spirit Island games. And then you'll click on one. You can then press connect. If there's a password. You'll have to put the password in. It looks like one of my um, one of my playtesters is also playing at this time. But you'll be able to find different people's games. Um, there's also a Spirit Island Discord. And that, uh, that Spirit Island Discord is where you can communicate with players through voice chat. And um, the password we use for those games is usually Dahan. And um, if you're interested in joining the Discord, just let me know and we can kind of, I'll, I'll post a, um, an invite link. And once you get access to the Discord, there's plenty of very friendly people that will be able to kind of help you um, or show you what to do or where to go to be able to play uh, the mod. So let's just say you were playing a single player game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press this create button. And then it's going to show different options for games to load. I'm now going to click one of those options. And before I uh, dive any further, um, the mod that you want to subscribe to, it's Spirit Island by MJ and Iacona. And if you do, you'll get this mod here. So you have all these different colors down here. You have all of the current spirits. Um, so starting off, let's take a look at um, the color. So you just click a color. So if I want to play yellow, I could pick yellow. If I want to play white, I could click, click white. And then over here, you have swap places. That's to swap your positioning. Play yellow lets me play the color, or then swap white allows me to switch this color with, um, for instance, the color over there to the right. And that would matter, for instance, if I'm playing Vengeance here, and I'm playing uh, white Vengeance, but I want to change my color to orange, I would be able to click orange. I'd be able to then click play spirit, and then I can choose to swap orange here, and now all of Vengeance would become orange rather than playing white or playing spirit, if that makes sense. Um, what I'm showing here is how to kind of, if you want to play multi-spirit uh, multi solo, this is what I'm kind of showing here. If I'm, let's say I'm playing or uh, I'm playing over here, and then I want to play um, yellow, I'd click yellow, and then I would um, click one of the spirits up here. And then I'd be playing a uh, two-spirit game, and I'd be able to switch between the spirits by pressing the play spirit button here. So looking up here on the upper left here, this is the um, the settings. This is how you kind of set the the game. So number of players is how many people you want to play with. We're going to press two. Leading adversary is if you want to play with a single adversary, you then can s select the level. If you want to s s uh, keep it at random, you just press random. And then you can kind of randomize the difficulty you want to play at. If you want to play with two adversaries, you'd set up two adversaries here. And then you can kind of um, change the overall difficulty. Scenarios, you can kind of select which scenario you'd like to play with, and then the board layout. So based on the number of players, you're going to have different layouts. So if I'm playing with four players, I might have the leaf, the snake, um, random. So if I'm playing, let's say, with five players, I might have the V, the snail, the peninsula, and so forth. If you press this max adversary levels, what this will do is it will make sure that no matter what, you'll get a level six of whatever adversary you have over here. Let's say I want to play with just a single adversary and I want to randomize and I don't want to play Habsburg. The way I do that is I just uncheck these boxes. So whatever boxes I uncheck, those will be the adversaries that I cannot load in in my game. And that the same thing goes for um, the different scenarios as well. If I uncheck these different boxes down here, that will uncheck um, which expansions I can play with. Variant rules, um, you can kind of make little changes here. I don't touch any of this. Usually exploratory. These are the changes that um, I believe Eric wants. Just like for, they're little fun little um, things that you can do to make kind of the game a little bit more uh, balanced. 
Um, the only one that we play with is Vengeance of the Dead. Um, Bringer is getting um, aspects, so I wouldn't really use that. War Touches is already getting removed, so I wouldn't use that. And then the rest of the four I just wouldn't really play with usually. And then once I've kind of set up my game, I'm going to press random. I'm going to get rid of Habsburg. We'll get rid of um, Sweden. And we'll press start game. And it will load a game up. And we randomized, uh, looks like Russia here. And these are the board layout that it randomized. Now that we've done that, we then can put both of our spirits on their starting boards. And you'll just have to drag and drop to do that on both boards. Over here is the, um, the invader. I think it's, I'm going to call it the invader table. I'm not sure. Um, over here you have the the uh, adversary card, you have the event deck, the different tokens, the terror level, blight, the fear, and the, um, the what is this, the invader stage deck. If you'd like to explore, you just press the explore button. If you want to flip the event, you flip the event, and then you press advance invader cards once you're ready to advance those cards. You can choose to add fear in two different ways. The first way is by pressing this button here to add fear, this button here to subtract fear, and that's left clicking. The other way is if you right click and add, just grab a destroy bag. This allows you to drag and drop different buildings into it, and that will automatically add the fear. See, that adds one fear, dropping the city adds two fear. It does not add manual fear. So if I'm playing something like um, Fetid Breath, I'll have to manually click to add that Fetid Breath. And you'll see I keep loading out here, and that's just because. Um, the button that I use to do this is I, I actually switch it I, to be the um, this button here. So I'll explain how to do that in a little bit. Let's talk about um, the hotkeys in your lower right. This is how you can spawn objects on the board. So you can see here, pressing 1 adds explorers, 2 adds towns, 3 adds cities, 4 adds blight. And notice that that blight will come from the card. Once enough blight is added, it will tell you to flip that blight card. And then you'd be able to flip that blight card. And you can still see, so five is badlands, six is beasts, seven is wilds, eight is disease, nine is strife, and zero is dahan. And that's how you can kind of fast add wherever you want the dahan. You can just easily set that up, set that up for you. And that's how I can kind of set up the, the board pretty quickly. There you go. Oh, that should be a city. Okay, so let's see. What else? Okay, so looking at the spirit board here, you have the gain button, the pay button, and then this ready token. The gain button is always going to gain energy the furthest left energy marker you have on your top track. So if I have one uncovered, I press gain and I gain that. If I right click it, it gets rid of it. If I have uncovered the two energy in the animal, I press it and I can gain two energy. If I have the four energy, left click and I can get the four energy. Pressing pay is going to pay whatever amount of cards you have up here and that will pay for you. So if I have um, strike low, I press gain energy and then I can press pay and that means that I've paid for this card here and right clicking gives you that energy back. Um, just, just be careful if I, for, for instance, if I um, Let's say I press pay now, and then I place the card, and then I right click. You'll see, I'll, I'll basically say as if I paid for the card, even though I didn't. So just be a little bit careful with that. You can also choose to manually add or subtract on your energy counter over here to the left. After the turn is over, you'll press this time passes button, and that will kind of shift the cards down here. And this is your discard, and these are your cards in hand here. Pressing Reclaim All brings all your cards from discard up into play. This here is your ready token, and this is what you use to kind of designate when you're done. We flip the ready token after the, um, the spirit phase, after the fast phase, and then after the invader phase. So there's going to be three, three points of flipping this marker. You flip it by pressing F, and F is used to flip anything. So you can flip the ready marker, you can flip cards. Um... I think that's the only things you'd want to flip. Okay. Let's see. So gaining power cards, you can gain power cards in two ways. You can left click the gain a minor, or you can left click this gain a minor button over here. And since I'm playing Vengeance, these are the cards that I've drafted. I can press it again to gain more. If I um, if I right click it, 
I actually gain six cards, and that's only used for Boon of Reimagining. I can right-click to gain six. If I right-click gain a major button, that means that gains me two power cards, and that's if you need to draft for, um, if you've drafted unlock here. And that allows me to get the two power cards needed to play unlock, or the two power cards gained from by playing unlock. The different hotkeys I have on my keyboard. So, starting off with Q. Q is how you rotate an object. And R, or actually not R, it's E is how you rotate it to the right. Q is how you rotate it to the left. If you press W, you move your camera up. S is down, A is to the left, and D is to the right. Alt is how you make something big. Alt Shift is how you look at the backside of something. It's very good for kind of seeing where do you start, as well as maybe you want to peek at the um, the fear card. Like sometimes if I'm playing in a six-player game, I may have, um, for instance, done all my fasts, and as well as maybe I'm waiting for everybody to do the rest of their turn, and maybe I have to run to the bathroom or get something. So rather than um, rather than like walking away and then coming back and then having the event and all of the fear cards, like everything resolved, I might just quickly do it with uh, by just doing this alt shift. So I'm not revealing the card to other players so I can see what it is. I can execute the action, execute whatever fear cards I have, and then um, go do what I need to do. So then when I get back, all I have to do is execute the explore and then my slows. It's just something to, to do that um, it kind of helps people out and makes the game move a little bit more slowly or not slowly, smoothly is what I meant to say. Um, some other uh, keys that you can use is the L button. The L locks things in place. So if you're playing Shroud and you damage things, you can press L to lock it. To put a damage on a town, you press 2. To put a damage on a city, you press 2 for 1 damage and 3 for 2 damage. And once again, if I press lock, once someone presses that time passes button, the things that are locked will stay locked and the things that we're not, we'll kind of pop back up there. And same thing with Dahan as well. If you want to load in custom images, the way you do that is by pressing object and then components, cards, custom card. You press this and then you would press um, browse local files, browse local files. Let me do that. And as you can see, I've uploaded something. And now we have a starlight image board. So this is a good way if you want to like just save an image, you can save an image on your desktop and then you can load it in. This is a good way to kind of add custom content. It's not going to be the best, but um, it definitely works. So some things, if you want to increase the size of something, you hold shift and then plus, and that increases the size. Shift and minus decreases it. You'll see me press F2 a lot. Um, F2 allows me to get my pointer out so I can, I press F2, I get the pen. If I press F2 again, I get lines. F2 again is squares, again is circles, and then erase. I can also change the color by pressing color button. And even though I'm playing orange, I can maybe make my colors purple. As you can see, drawing here. Now I can hold down shift plus to make it larger or shift minus to make it smaller as well. Let's see. I'm sure I'm missing something. I can right click and add grab spirit markers. This is something that we use to kind of help indicate which boards the spirits have started on. Um, I know a lot of times uh, players love to grow into other boards really early on. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, regardless, putting the spirit marker down kind of shows players, okay, this is where Vengeance is starting the game. So we know, like, if, if you're familiar with Vengeance's starting cards, you might be able to kind of, at least in your head, kind of play with those cards. Um, I mean, let's say I'm playing Starlight, and maybe I might need Vengeance's Ravage skip. On a disease land, and vengeance is here, and I'm over here. I might be able to, vol I might be able to um, tell that to vengeance. Hey, I need you to skip this land, or can you skip this land? Um, it's very, it, it's not as important in solo or single player. But if I'm playing with, let's say, a six spirit board, and vengeance is here, and starlight is here, I now asking for that favor from vengeance is something that's just not really possible. So it it ends up um, saving a lot of time and also um, headache. Another thing that you can do is load in objects. You do that by pressing object and then going and clicking saved object. You then can load um, something that you've saved. So this is how I'm able to load in my saved starlight presence. I have that saved um, that was created by another player. I have it saved and then I just press, like I said, object, save object, and then I load that object in. 
A lot of players that ask, how do I get all of my um, cards to line up nicely? The way I do that is you kind of drag a box, you select all of them, and then by pressing a number key, not your number pad, but a number key, you can put them into one column, two columns, or three columns, one, two, or three. Now if I have, let's say, an even bigger set of cards, I can even make five columns, uh, four col uh, three columns, four columns. Actually, I can't do four. I could just go to five, but you get the point. Let's say I just have like kind of cards just all over the place. I can drag a box and I can press G on that and that will bring all of the cards together into one. Pressing R allows me to kind of shuffle the cards. That's good if I'm adding, th adding cards into the minor deck. I might shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. I can right click the minor deck and I can press um, search and that allows me to find a specific card that I'm looking for. I can right click an object on the board and I can change the color by pressing color tint and I can change whatever color I'd like to make it. I can also increase the size of it or decrease the size. I can also copy and paste it as well or I can also delete it by pressing the delete key. Let's see, am I missing anything? Um, so if I'm playing a game of Spirit Island, how it would work is both players, let's just say we're playing and we will play some cards. Let's say Vengeance plays this card turn one. Starlight plays these cards turn one. Once both spirits are done, they'll flip their ready tokens. And then it will give us, it'll say fast powers are ready. Then it says use your fast powers. You then use your fast powers. Once you're ready, you would flip them again. And then you'd enter the invader phase, in which case you'd press the event. You'd either skip it if it's turn one or you'd resolve it. You then would activate any fear cards that you have. And then you'd press explore. Everyone would explore, and then you'd press advance the invader cards, and then that would put everybody into the slow phase, and then everyone would activate and do all of their slow powers. Once they're done, they'll flip both tokens again, and then it will be, they'll say all players are ready, in which case you press time passes, and then the cards would go into the discard, and then you would be able to do your, your, uh, your next turn. If you get a blight card that modifies the fear pool, the way you do that is by pressing modify and that will add more fear to the deck. If you left click and then right click takes it away. And that's specifically if you get the um, the the blight card that adds fear to that deck. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here to showcase. I think that's it for this video. If you like this video, like, subscribe for more content. If you found this video helpful, leave a comment. Um, if you have any questions, also leave a comment and I can try to get back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you guys in the next video.